of Cosmogonic Eros, published by Theon Publishing, uh, by Ludwig Klages. Uh, it's a book that's been on my to-read list for the longest time. Uh, they published it in uh, 2018, and I remember seeing it at the time thinking, oh, I'd love to get my hands on that. Um, uh, but for some reason, I just didn't, and then didn't, and then didn't. And then Theon Publishing actually reached out to me and said, listen, is there anything on your back on our back catalogue that you'd like to read in exchange for a, a, a fair review. And I said, yes, <laughs> I've been dying to read of Cosmogonic Eros. And they very, very kindly sent me a copy. So here it is. Uh, I've been reading it. It's just a fascinating read. Uh, I... Um, I was quite right in <laughs> in my my estimation that I would enjoy reading it. So, um, it was written by uh, a, a, a little known German philosopher uh, from the early twentieth century. Uh, so, of course, with all the problems that that comes with, and this might be one of the reasons why he is um, he's not very well known. Um, although I I will just say this is that um, while that uh, situation does come across a little, it uh, as long as you're aware of it, uh, it certainly doesn't prevent his important ideas. Uh, from coming across, uh, you know, th there's no way that this is some kind of uh, Nazi pamphlet or anything like that. It's just that, well, he wrote this in 1918, so long before the rise of um, uh, of, of Nazism. Uh, however, uh, Nietzsche was already writing and he was very uh, uh, aware of Nietzsche's work and uh, yeah, that can that can come through um, a, a little bit. Uh, I, I generally feel kind of uncomfortable around that kind of um, s literature at all, but it's not bothered me at all in this uh, in this uh, situation because that's really not what the book is about. Um, uh, so yeah, let me give you a, a quick a quick overview. First of all, the construction of the book. You know that I. I love my beautiful books, and this really is one such beautiful book. Uh, it's it's this really really nice midnight blue, very shimmery um, uh, cover, and there's this silver stamp on the uh, on the front. And um, yeah, my camera isn't picking that up at all. It just looks uh, a little bit damaged, but it, that's not at all what it looks like uh, when I look <laughs> around my camera. It looks kind of um, like glitter, uh, and it picks up the light in a really very fancy way. It's uh, it's it's really really lovely, um, and and yeah, and that spine is is uh, is is very very nice as well. Um, I think I might just get rid of this um, of this dust cover. It's it's very interesting. There's no question, uh, but I I don't think it's as interesting as the book uh, underneath it. I think it's um, yeah. I'm, I might I might simply get rid of it. Uh, we'll see. There we are. Okay, so um, moving to the inside of the book. Um, it starts off with a very interesting uh, introduction, a very long introduction by Paul Bishop, about uh, about 70 pages. There we go, by Paul Bishop, who is um, the, well, you could say he's probably the, the foremost uh, specialist on, um, on Ludwig Klages, um, maybe outside of Germany. Uh, uh, there's a very interesting podcast which I'll link down below. I'm afraid I, uh, Hermetics, I think, uh, is is the name of the podcast. Um, and yeah, there were, he was invited there. He uh, he talks about uh, uh, Ludwig Klages in in a little bit more detail than I will here. As an uh, a full hour episode, but for me, what was very what, well, what was <laughs> what was lovely was was the 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 the, the work itself. Uh, Paul Bishop's introduction is fascinating, and it's a really nice way to ease yourself into Clagis's ideas. Um, but uh, Clagis does that very well on his own, to be 100% honest with you. Uh, I found that his writing was clear, 
maybe maybe I'm speaking out of turn here. The translation is clear. Uh, um, uh, in fact, Bishop says that um, uh, Clagis is particularly difficult to read, apparently, in the original, since uh, he, he likes to uh, play on words. He likes to let the reader um, uh, decide for himself what meaning of each word uh, he's, he's actually intending, and so on and so forth. But this translation is just a breeze to read, and um, I didn't feel lost at any point. That may be because I had read the introduction. You know, there, there's certainly a, a, an argument for that. Um, but uh, but it's it's very very interesting. What's it about? It's about ecstatic um, states, specifically the ecstatic state of eros. Uh, he starts off with his first chapter explaining why he doesn't use the word love, uh, so the German word Liebe, uh, because it's just too general a term. Uh, and he then goes on to define uh, eros in contrast with what he calls sexus, so the, 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 the sexual drive. Uh, the reason he does this is because he sees the sexual drive as coming from a place of of lack right so a desire to to full to to fulfill um, uh, uh, something that's that's not there um uh, whereas eros he sees rather as completion uh, f uh, absolute final fulfillment um and um, uh, while sex could be a, a path to it. Uh, it is not it. Uh, and there are many other um, paths and routes to it that, uh, that, that he suggests in the book. And it's very, very interesting. Very interesting as well the way uh, he introduces the, the concept of this state as as the god Eros uh, himself, he, I, I really like also the the introduction that he gives to Eros, saying, uh, you know, the, even the most intellectually inclined might be fooled by the uh, current association with the winged cherub. Uh, uh, and then he goes into uh, the the original sources, which give uh, Eros as a as a rather frightening figure, <laughs> um, uh, and then even uh, earlier to the cosmogonic, uh, the so cosmogonic meaning uh, uh, to do with the origins of the universe. Um, uh, so the cosmogonic Eros, um, who is who is um, uh, Fanny's uh, Eros Dionysus, of whom there is an image right in the back over here and here we go so very much um uh, in the in the orphic tradition uh, the the origin the originator of the universe um, fascinating fascinating stuff um there we are um i'm 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 always interested in works on ecstatic states. Uh, there's, there's a couple more over here. Um, the Joseph Campbell's The Ecstasy of Being and then The Art of Losing Control, very recent one by Jules Evans. Um, they're, they're very nice as well. Um, uh, this has really given me um, a platform uh, and probably a vocabulary uh, to... For, for, with which to uh, talk about these um, these experiences, these states. Uh, so if only for that, uh, it's, it's very interesting. Oh, by the way, there's a fascinating um, uh, appendix. Uh, actually, there are a few fascinating appendices. Um, but that very first one, uh, why does it bring ruin to lift the veil of Isis? So I won't, <laughs> I won't spoil that for you. Um, a, a quick look at the um, table of contents before I um, uh, leave you with this. Uh, so this is the uh, the introduction by Paul Bishop. Then there, uh, these are the names of the chapters: preliminary considerations of terms uh, on the Eros concept 
of antiquity, elemental eros, on the state of ecstasy, on the essence of ecstasy, on ancestor veneration, concluding word on eros and passion, and then those appendices. There we go. So that's it. Uh, that's my review of, of Cosmogonic Eros by Lud Ludwig Klages, translated um, by Mav Kuhn uh, with that um, uh, introduction by Paul Bishop. And there's, um, there's, a, there's a little editorial note by uh, David Beth and Jessica Grote, um, uh, owners of Theon, I, I believe. There we are. Thanks ever so much for watching and see you very soon. Don't forget to, to check out the links in the description. Uh, subscribe down below if you haven't done already uh, and, and uh, leave us a like. Uh, that's, that would be very much appreciated and see you very soon with another, with another video. See you. Bye-bye.